Hey guys, it's Brian coming to you with the TST Industries Superbike R3 build series. And today we're going to be focused on something that is very, very key to this build series, but seldom seen. That is the machine process that actually is behind all of the machine parts that we make for you guys and for our race bikes. This is the place where we take a raw block of aluminum that looks like this and turn it into a functional part that ends up looking like this. This is the Captive R3 chain adjuster that will allow us to change the rear wheel without having all of our parts fall out onto the ground. They do go into an anodizing process. We're not gonna walk you through that, but it's a very cool process. There's some tool changes, some setup changes. We'll jump into that, show you guys what's going on in the machine. Very cool process, let's check it out. All right, so we are back in the TST garage. We came back from the machining shop. You guys saw how our parts were being made. The process that takes a raw block of aluminum and turns it into a pretty sweet looking part, something like this. This is in particular the Yamaha R3 captive chain adjuster. Now you saw the how, but I'm sure you're kind of interested as to the why. Some people don't know exactly why we would design a part like this. And the main incentive behind this one exactly was making this rear wheel swap on this R3 as easy and as less of a convoluted process as possible. So when we first started working on this motorcycle, we realized that when you change that rear wheel, there's a lot that can go wrong in that system. The spacers that are in the wheel fall out very, very easily when you're trying to navigate it back up in and those actual chain adjusters and the axle blocks inside fall straight out the back. It's a very frustrating process and we needed to do something to change it, which is what prompted the design of these captive chain adjusters. So the captive chain adjuster did actually allow us to integrate our GP lifter, which allows us to use a different style of stand, a spool stand as opposed to the typical stand which actually captures spools. So the spool stand actually has a small boss like you would have on your swing arm typically, but that is on the stand side this time and it actually gets located up into this GP lifter and allows the bike to be lifted very quickly. It's a little bit easier to locate that with the stand, getting this bike up on the stands, getting warmers on it. It's a much quicker process than having to deal with those stands that capture spools. Sometimes they'll get a little wonky and get twisted, one goes on and the other doesn't, you could tip your bike over. We didn't wanna deal with that, so we went ahead and integrated our GP lifter, allowing us to use that spool stand. So with the integration of our GP lifter, it did actually allow us to also still use our GP lifter slider, which does provide a little bit of protection, probably not to the exhaust, but definitely gonna prevent that sort of thing from happening on the axle itself. Obviously this has happened before, we actually had a chance to get these on, but it will prevent any further damage to that axle in the event of a low slide. 
with all of these components that we're throwing on this Yamaha R3 in this rear section specifically, this is becoming a less and less convoluted system to work on, which is ideal for the rider and the person working on that motorcycle. We will actually even be carrying in the future Fast Frank setup, which is a setup that actually takes that rear brake carrier and makes it captive to the chain adjuster itself. So it's one less thing you have to worry about. If you guys do wanna pick up some of these parts, they will be offered through our works program and through our website. They're not offered just yet, but definitely keep updated because they are coming your way if you want some of these fancy components for your own bike. That's gonna do it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.